Want to see something really embarrassing? Stick around. I didn't want to make this episode. Even thinking about it makes me feel a little bit like Lenny Baxter, a bald, overweight recluse who spends all his time fawning over his toy collection. Sound like anybody you know? Talking about a children's cartoon on the internet isn't exactly where I saw my life going. I mean, what do you guys think? I'm one of them brownies? I ain't no dang brownie! But I had to make this episode. Cartoon Network, you forced my hand. How does a grown man do it? How does a grown man go on the internet and talk about the Powerpuff Girls and expect to be taken seriously? Well, I don't know, but... <sighs> Here goes nothing. You want to know why the Powerpuff Girls was rad? Because it was the perfect blend of action and comedy. The professor said not to harm an insect just because it's yucky on the outside, but this one's yucky on the inside! Who wants to see it? I do! You see, the core idea behind what makes this show work is the juxtaposition of how adorable these characters are and how needlessly, excessively violent they are. And make no mistake, excessive violence is pivotal to the existence of these characters. They'll, they'll seem much stronger and much more heroic in contrast because they look so innocent and, and harmless. Everybody loves cute stuff, but if something's too cute or if it's cute too often, it gets annoying. Violence in the Powerpuff Girls is essential because it neutralizes the cuteness so that we're not susceptible to any possibility of cute overload. The original Powerpuffs whooped so much ass, they literally called them the whoop ass girls. Heck, in the beginning of each episode, we were treated to the devil himself getting kicked in the mouth with stray particles of blood and dislodged teeth cascading beautifully across the screen. Oh man, what a cartoon. Not all superheroes need to be excessively violent, but the Powerpuff Girls do. Because without that spice to counteract the sugar, you're just left with a big gross pile of frosting. And not the good kind. Drink the antidote, drink it up. Better from a plane than from a cup. Drink the antidote, drink it up. Let's not mince words. Violence is rad. It's basically the coolest thing humans have ever invented, and I don't understand why we all have to pretend like we don't love it so much. And that's what made the Powerpuff Girls different from so many other superheroes. Their quest for justice was fueled entirely by their own sadism. They weren't trying to avenge the death of whoever or fulfill the responsibility that comes with whatever, blah, blah, blah. They just like when they kick the dude and the red stuff comes out. I like that too. But For crying out loud, Powerpuff Girls, did you really need to break all this guy's fingers? How's he gonna wipe when he's on the john? This show had bite, it had crunch, it was like chunky peanut butter. It was a pulpy, campy, satisfying piece of true Americana. It's basically the cartooniest tune that ever cartooned out of Toontown. It was made for you to eat cereal to in your footy pajamas. And even though I do believe it was the best children's show of all time, make no mistake, it was lowbrow. You see, I enjoy the Powerpuff Girls on the same level that people enjoy things like the Evil Dead series, the Toxic Avenger, Robocop. Sounds weird, right? Well, you might not remember, but the Powerpuff Girls was a celebration of all the things your mommy told you you're not supposed to like. Things like violence, sadism, gore, mayhem, dismemberment, snot, dirty jokes, voluptuous women, falling glass, dangerous weapons, gross monsters, you get your feet up in my property! nightmare fuel, weird bugs, giant robots that make anime sounds, Extended sequences of missile hatches opening. High tempo percussion solos. Explosions. Zack Snyder levels of apocalyptic collateral damage. Torture. Body horror. Elder abuse. Children hitting each other. Dragon Ball Z fights. Whatever the heck's going on here. Whatever the heck's going on here. Real actual guns. Served with campy, lovable characters, campy, lovable villains, memorable stories, a retro-futuristic cityscape setting, and, for some reason, a talking dog. And let me tell you, that dog might be able to talk, but he sure as heck can't drive. It's good. It's good. 
It's good. The perfect blend of action and comedy, because that's what kids want to see. The Powerpuff Girls reboot has no action, and it ain't funny. The reboot shifts focus to the everyday lives of the Powerpuff Girls to showcase the real problems that children have to deal with. I don't want to watch a cartoon to see normal life. I see normal life when I look in the mirror every day. And guess what? It's boring and sad. I'm sorry, but why would you focus on the part of a superhero's life when they're not being a superhero when undeniably the most interesting thing about superheroes is that they're superheroes! Ugh, we have superpowers, you know. Kids have to go to school all day and then when they come home, you're gonna make them watch a cartoon about going to school? How come when adults grow up, they don't remember what it's like to be a kid? Hey, in case you forgot, school sucks and kids don't like it. So imagine you go see the new Evil Dead movie, but instead of Ash Williams continuing to wage his bloody never ending war against the Deadites, he's going to school, cleaning his room, talking to a transsexual horse, being well behaved. <sighs> Where's the violence? It's supposed to be violent. Man, who's making this show? Librarians? Mormons? The Illuminati? Oh! Maybe it is the Illuminati. This show is nothing but safe, watered down, non-challenging filler. This is a baby show for babies that only babies would like because they're stupid babies. It's colors and noise for parents to put their kids in front of like jangling plastic keys. Still don't believe me? Well then let's play a little game of compare and contrast. <laughs> Antidote, drink it up. Better from a plane than from a cup. Drink the antidote, drink it up. Chickens? Ooh, glitter! Scrap looking is so awesome! Yeah! Dude, it's Sloppy Joe Tuesday! You want some more, man? Oh, 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 oh. Did you? No. Oh. Yeah? No. Jeez, a loo, this show makes me want to blow my brains out! <laughs> Shifting focus to their everyday lives had the worst ramifications on the best Powerpuff Girl, Blossom. Blossom is a capable leader and an efficient superhero who's passionate about doing her job and doing it well. But when you remove her from her element, leading a superhero team that fights criminals, villains, and giant monsters, you take away any opportunity for her to exemplify her defining characteristics. The same characteristics that make any leader great. Namely, that she is resourceful, is able to make tough decisions, and can think fast under pressure. Seven doesn't have a square root. It's pride. Oh, and you know this girl don't fake the funk on a fresh nasty dunk. Nothing but net, baby. All of the decisions that the reboot writers have made were, according to them, done in the interest of fleshing out the characters. But all they've really done is make these characters weak, hindered, and gimped. Is gimped offensive? Can I still say gimped? Yeah, probably not. This is especially ironic to me because even though the phrase Powerpuff might sound juvenile and excessively feminine, if you look a little closer, there's a hidden word in plain sight that you might not have ever noticed. Wow, it's almost as if these characters are supposed to be powerful or something. The weird choices these people make never end. The mayor's assistant, Miss Bellum, was written off the show entirely because, in the words of the show's frontman, Nick Jennings, she wasn't quite indicative of the kind of messaging that we wanted to be giving out at this time. And that was a good choice on our part. I'm sorry, what kind of messages are you trying to send? That women shouldn't have big titties? I'm pretty sure girls with big titties can't help it. Okay, sure, I guess the way that she dressed was a little tasteless, considering that she was a government worker and the assistant to a publicly elected official. But these are only things that adults notice. When I was a kid, I didn't look at Miss Bellum and see a body. I saw a person because she was written as one, which is how you write a voluptuous woman. And if her breasts were really that much of a problem, then why didn't you just remove them like you did with Miss Key. Whoa! Hold up! You can't make this stuff up, folks. 
You couldn't let this lady keep her bosoms? No, apparently this poor educator was forced under the knife for a mandated double mastectomy against her will just so the audience wouldn't be exposed to the fully clothed contours of her natural body. Jeez, Alou, what a nightmare. Sorry, Miss Keen. Also, it might be distasteful of me to make such a superficial jab, but how come this show looks like it was drawn by a five-year-old? The beautiful hand-painted backgrounds and muted earthy colors schemes of the original series made the world feel organic and lived in, and the UPA-inspired designs and use of Hanna-Barbera sound effects made the show feel like a campy fusion of old and new sensibilities. This just looks like they hit the make cartoon button on their computer. Although to be fair, I am kinda anal about the way these characters are drawn. I've been drawing them over and over again for the past 15 years trying to get them right. There's something deceptively complex about the simple shapes in these designs. One errant line throws the whole thing off model. Man, I tell I can't stop. Oh, this is seven kind of creepy. I know it sounds like I'm using a lot of the same adjectives over and over again here, but I'm doing it deliberately. Campy, pulpy, violent. Funny. These were the ingredients chosen because the original series was kind of like a regurgitation of the things that Craig McCracken liked as a kid. You can't remove these elements and replace them with nothing. Now look, a few weeks ago I did an episode about perspective. Perspective is always important and it's especially important when you're a critic. So before you all start typing up your little comments, I just want to acknowledge that in light of all this, my perspective is telling me two things. One, I don't have the wherewithal to judge this show adequately because I'm not its audience. It's a show for children and I'm an adult. And two, reboots and remakes don't warrant as much outrage as they seem to elicit because they don't and never can impede your ability to enjoy the source material. In regards to the first item, Cartoon Network, I issue a challenge to you. Air the best episodes of the original series as shown here, as well as the Powerpuff Girls movie in its entirety, and then ask kids what they like, the new stuff or the old stuff. I have faith in what they'll choose. Now in regards to the second item, all I can say is, for some reason, it's a bummer to see the legacy of something you care about mistreated. It might sound nerdy, but I think it's something we can all relate to even if we try to act aloof about it. So way to go, Powerpuff Reboot. You've succeeded in making me understand why Star Wars fans hate the Phantom Menace so much. And that's the most biting insult known to nerd kind. Now before I wrap this up, I gotta talk about the new voices. I could analyze the nuances of the new performances of Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, but I'm gonna hold my tongue here. <laughs> These girls were probably ecstatic to have gotten the opportunity to play the same iconic characters that they watched on TV when they were little. And even though it sparked a lot of upset from the original cast, the new actresses shouldn't be the target of any unfairly harsh criticism or negativity. They're probably good kids, cut them a break. But my stance is, and I'm gonna make this as clear as I can, cartoon characters are their voices. Let me say it again, cartoon characters are their voices. You can't replace a cartoon character's voice. You just can't. I know a lot of you will think I'm being closed-minded, and I'm sorry I'm taking such a stubborn position on this, but it's just how I feel. And don't tell me that Catherine Cavadini, Tara Strong, and Elizabeth Daly are too old to play these characters. They played them two and a half years ago, and they did great as always. It seems like Cartoon Network replaced the old actresses just so they could release this one ad where they talk about the new actresses. Because young people are more marketable than mom people. But you know what? I think mom people are beautiful, and you should too. Shame on you, Cartoon Network. I guess you just don't love your mothers. The only instance where recasting a cartoon character can work is if the character is being reimagined. The reboot could have dealt with more complex, darker stories, or it could have been about the new generation of heroes, or they could have had it take place in the future, do like a Batman Beyond thing. Instead, it just feels like a synthetic appropriation of the original series where some characters have new voices and some don't. And if I were a bit more paranoid, I might say I see a pattern regarding which characters were recast and which ones weren't. So, let's recap the important life lessons that the modern Powerpuff Girls is imparting on today's youth. One, girls should not fight or go on dangerous, exciting adventures. They should only go to school. Two, women should not have breasts. And if they do have breasts, they will either be exiled to an island or their breasts will be taken from them with painful surgical procedures. And three, men are irreplaceable. 
but women are expendable. Congratulations, Cartoon Network. You're so progressive. I thought this show was you talking about movies. This show is whatever I want it to be. Yeah, and apparently you want it to be you bending over backwards to make sure you never get a date again. Goofball, do you mind? Can't you see I'm busy demanding that a show for children adhere to my gross sense of entitlement? All right, props to you for owning up to it, I guess. <sighs> Look, it's time for the bottom line. I can understand Cartoon Network not wanting to air a show that glorifies and celebrates violence like the original series did. The 90s were all about being edgy and pushing the envelope, and nowadays people are a little more thoughtful and a little more sensitive. And that's fine, but if the Powerpuff Girls can't be violent, then they're not the Powerpuff Girls. They're just a couple of brats I don't want to be around. Ugh, we have superpowers, you know. And to the people who make this show, I might be a bald, overweight nerd who spends all his time watching children's cartoons and complaining about them on the internet, but at least I know how to use spell check. How embarrassing. And so once again, the brain is dumped. Thanks to your host, Max G. And I hope my general lack of self-awareness creeped you out. Well, I'd say you did a pretty good job of embarrassing yourself beyond all salvation. Well, goofball, everybody's a nerd about something. Hey, at least I'm not one of those weirdos who likes Star Wars. <laughs> Seafoam, gimp-lipped shell of a shadow. You know, you say you know how to use spell check, but just the other day you misspelled naive. What? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. What are you talking about? Show him, BB. Neav. Oh man. Well, there goes my point. Okay, in my defense, that's one of those tricky words where you can never remember if the I comes before or after the vowel. Also, I make this show myself. Do I get a little leniency for that? Nope! You blew it! <laughs>